Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Kai and today I have for you this fun fairy core pink butterfly inspired set. I really wanted to try a 3D flower design, uh, particularly the glass flower technique. And so this is what I came up with. I am excited to show you all. This is also in conjunction with a Melody Susie polish review. If you didn't see my last video, I was sent some PR from Melody Susie and from No Reserve LA. So go check that video out if you're looking for swatches of colors. But I did decide on using these two colors from the Fleur Week collection for this set. This is the gorgeous semi-sheer sparkly pink. It's ever so slightly shimmery. You can almost not even see it on camera here. But in person, it's got just the slightest gold shimmer in it that makes it really pretty and subtle. And then I am also using the white because I found that the white was super pigmented, which means it's great for doing one coat of a base color or even doing line work or an ombre. So that is what I use it for. I did want to showcase just how much pigment was in the polish itself. Here's what it looks like. These polishes are HEMA free, so they are vegan, cruelty free, and HEMA free. They are part of Melody Susie's new line of polishes. I know most people know Melody Susie for their drills and their dust collector, so it was exciting to see them come out with a new set of polishes. And the packaging on these were absolutely gorgeous. So this is the gift box set for their release of this new line of polishes, and it came with these two other polishes, a black and a red. The red was super pretty, amazing color. The black was okay. It was a little um, too transparent for my liking. I needed like three coats, two really thick ones for full coverage, but I think the consistency of the polishes is really nice. It self levels, as you can see here. Again, HEMA free. I love that more brands are going in that direction for people who have allergies or who have sensitivities and may develop an allergy and it also comes with some stickers a really cute little set of dried flowers that goes in just an empty nail polish container nail polish uh, jar that's meant to look like a face and it's all themed around this beautiful blue porcelain pattern so yeah i really enjoyed my experience with this collection Mostly because I'm a sucker for a good unboxing experience. I think if you are going to buy a whole collection from a company, that there should be some time and effort put into the actual packaging of that collection. That's part of the reason I'm so drawn to like Korean and Japanese gel brands is because they do tend to put a lot of effort into not just the product itself, but also the overall packaging and the look of the products so i did really appreciate that about the fleur we set here i'm just showing you what one coat of that polish looks like you can see the shimmer a little bit here it's very very subtle but it is a gorgeous color so i put one coat on i always do this i flip the nails upside down right before curing just in case there's a thicker layer of polish it pulls towards the apex and not the edges and here is what two coats of that polish looks like you do get a really nice, it's not a cool tone pink, I would call it more of like a, um, a bit of a peachy pink. And two coats gets you a nice even color. You really could probably do one thin coat if you wanted that sheerness, if you really liked that look. I wanted just a little bit more opaqueness to the base coat here, so I opted for two. You could probably do three and get a pretty opaque color, but I was okay with a little bit of sheerness for this one. Now I'm just wiping off the tacky layer. I personally do this um, when I'm working with gel, just because for me, it's easier to paint on something that doesn't have that tacky layer because sometimes it can be slippery. After I clean everything up, I take that white color and I put a little bit of it on a palette because I'm planning on doing a French, sorry, not a French, an ombre with the sponge technique. So I take my little sponge dabber here I just got this off of AliExpress recently. I had a whole haul video, which you can check out in the little corner link up above. Um, this is my first time using it, and honestly, I quite liked the experience. 
it might be a combination of like the sponge being super fine and the polish being really nice and pigmented but i only found i needed a couple layers of polish to really get a nice gradient that looked very close to airbrushed i would say there was a slight slight bit of texture from that sponge but it was much less than when i've used like the triangular makeup sponges before this sponge really does seem a little bit more densely packed so that you get a nice even ombre my recommendation for this technique is to do your first layer bringing the ombre up as high as you want it and then every layer after that should concentrate that color closer and closer to the edge where you want that color to be the most opaque just personally i find that's easiest for me but you could do it the opposite too you could start at the back end get a really uh, like thick color down and then put layers on more and more towards the other color that you're trying to blend it into that is an option too i just prefer it this way here's what it looks like and now i am going to work on the 3d elements so this is the yogo 3d clear clay gel I recently picked this up from Sweetie Nail Supply. My discount code is in the box below. Get pressed for 10% off, and I'm really liking it so far. So I normally use the McCart 3D gel for sculpting. However, it's a little bit thick, and I was finding I couldn't mix in alcohol inks to get a custom color as well. So I wanted to try this one with that technique. So I lay out a nice big dollop of the 3D gel, I love that it has that little uh, cover so that I can make sure no floaties get into it. And I take a white alcohol ink here and I'm going to mix that up on a palette. Now, I've tried this with polish before and it does not work. Your 3D gel gets super gloopy and basically unusable with an alcohol ink because the liquid base is alcohol and it's really just like pigments that are suspended in it. It works perfectly fine. It's going to feel a little bit sticky at first, but keep working it in there. And I promise you that you will have a nice workable material to use at the end. I noticed that the Yogo Clear Clay was slightly sticky if you're trying to use like your nitrile gloves to mold it by hand. So I would recommend using the silicone tools like I am here to work with this product um, because again, it is just ever so slightly sticky with your gloves please make sure that you are wearing gloves though if you are using gel that way you are lessening the contact it might have with your bare skin and make sure that you always always do your research on the products that you are using and here i'm just separating that white into i believe eight sections because i wanted one to test with and then i knew i was going to do five flower petals and some butterfly wings so I split that up the white, that is, and then I take some clear and I also roll that out, split it up into what I tried to make, eight equal sections. If you do it this way and you separate your gel out by rolling it into a log and rolling it into circles, it just helps you keep the size consistent. That way when you're doing petals for flowers or whatnot, they're all about the same amount of product. So I had seen a picture, I'll insert it here, of a 3D flower that had like a clear overlay to it and I wasn't sure how people were doing it. So this was my solution that I came up with. I take that white gel and I flatten out some of the clear and I basically just envelop a dot of that white uh, 3D clay that I've made in the clear by kind of like pushing up the edges, pushing it further down into what's essentially like a little wonton almost of clear gel. Believe it or not, this technique here that I'm using to fold that white into the clear ball is actually a technique people use to make like dumplings. Um, I've done it before when I've made red bean buns at home. So uh, it's crazy how different techniques from different art forms, even like cooking will help you achieve certain results even in other crafts. So once I have the petal placed down where I want it, I'm just using a silicone tool to kind of spread out that petal shape, thinning out the middle section and the tip of the flower petal first so that I have more to work with on the sides. If you notice here, I'm not putting down the petal um, right next to the other one, mostly because I want to make sure that I have room for all of them. So the way I approached this flower was I laid down the first petal the one that I knew would be pointing straight up. This is going to be a five-petaled flower. 
So I laid that one down first. Then I skipped a petal and went straight to the bottom two flowers because if you look at a star, the space between the bottom two petals of a flower is going to be in line directly with the middle or the center of the top point of a star. So just doing it this way meant that I could evenly space out the petals without running into an issue where I have no room for the last two or the last one. So here's me finishing up the molding of the flower. I am flash carrying the petals in between to make sure they retain their shape. And I love the effect that this process gives where you have that white in the middle and the clear edges. I almost wish that I had used less white and more clear. I think if I attempt this technique again, I will do that just so that you get even more of that clear glass effect around the petals. I just think it looks so cool. I'm not sure how the original person achieved this look. I didn't do too, too much digging because this idea just popped in my head when I saw it initially. But um, if anybody knows, definitely like link the video down below. I would love to see how that actually works. So here I thought I would extend this technique into creating a 3D butterfly on the middle finger. I'll be honest, I don't know that I love how the butterfly came out. Um, I think maybe I made the bottom two wings a little bit too large. I just wasn't 100% loving the final outcome. I think it also was an issue of the middle finger just looked way too busy with all of the other elements of the design included. So I actually ended up doing two different designs for the middle finger, which Honestly, it's not uncommon for me when I am doing these designs. I usually know what I want to do for each nail going forward and I have like inspiration pictures to work from, but until I kind of see everything together and until I actually have everything on the nail, I am constantly making tweaks while I am doing the design, while I'm painting, while I'm adding elements. Just because, you know, you always have an idea in your head of what you want something to look like. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it is going to exactly come out that way when you actually put it into practice. When you actually put it on paper or on whatever medium you are working with. So, yeah. The butterfly idea, I do think it looks cute. And I think maybe on its own, it would be a good addition to a design. I think it just maybe was a little bit too busy overall but what do you all think let me know in the comments this is the second design that i came up with the second option it was just a little bit more simple so as not to distract from too many of the other elements on the nails that were a little bit more busy had more 3d going into it but here i'm just showing you how i do 3d swirls this is my tried and true jinbi crazy top coat you can get this off of Sweetie Nail Supply. And I'm just using a short liner brush. I'm dipping it straight into the pot so that when you pull it out, most of the product is concentrated already on the end and you can get that nice like drop shape on your nail. Here, I'm just cleaning up that shape, making sure most of that product again is concentrated towards the end of the droplet, towards the end of the line. So you get that nice curve. So this one was really simple, just a 3D butterfly charm, some pearls, and some swirls. Back to the 3D sculpting. I am now attempting to make the bow. So I take some pearl powder here. Uh, this pearl powder was cheap. I think it was from like Timur or something. It was, it's not very good, I'll be honest. Like it works fine for these purposes here where you're mixing it into something, even mixing it into a gel. But when it comes to actually using it as a chrome powder, it kind of sucked. I did it on the pinky and pointer finger later, and it just, it doesn't give much of an effect at all. So I would not recommend this. I'm not even going to link it because it, honestly, I don't even think it's worth it. Um, one thing I'm finding out more and more is that it's definitely worth it to get high quality chrome pigments because the higher the quality, the finer the powder is milled and therefore it's easier to get a really nice smooth chrome texture with no sort of blotchiness or anything like that. To make the bow, I am starting kind of like I did with the flower petals where I put down the little dollop of the 3D gel and I smooth it out towards one edge to almost get a petal shape 
and then I'm straightening out the edges to get like a triangle where one side has more of the product than the pointed side and then I go into the top and bottom and actually make like a little divot with the tip of one of those silicone tools just so it looks like uh, it's that place where the ribbon folds together that's what I'm doing here this for some reason took me a long time um, I think I was just like very nitpicking when it came to the shape I am pretty sure I had a perfectly fine shape many times throughout this process but I kept going back in and like pushing it little areas trying to get it exactly perfect and I don't really think I needed to I tend to do that a lot but that's okay here I'm doing another layer of bow I wanted this to be like a double bow with two sections of the loops so I cured the first section and then I did the same process on top with a slightly smaller bead of that 3d gel so that these folds these uh, bow loops would be a little bit smaller and then I'm just doing the ends of the ribbon I roll out a little log of that 3d gel place it on the nail and then stretch out the ends to where I want them to be I'm giving it a little bit of a curve here so it looks very natural very organic like it's hanging and I do go in and try to add a few little like ridges to the center to make it look like it's you know ruffled it's flowing like fabric would so that's what I'm doing there and every step of the way here with these 3d elements I'm curing just to make sure that I'm not messing up the parts that I do like when I'm trying to sculpt and shape the other parts and that is our 3d bow pretty simple you could probably use a mold for this if you want to save time I just wanted to try doing it by hand then I'm gonna top everything off with the yogo zombie gel I like this top coat it's a really nice thick top coat so if you're trying to like smooth out texture or uh, smooth out something that you've encapsulated I think it's a great product that ombre again I was pretty pleased with because I had not gotten very good results before with the sponge method but this time it seemed to work well and here I am just adding in that layer of chrome powder on top of my cured top coat uh the effect was not very good I think it's because this chrome powder is probably let down with some sort of talc some sort of other powder that keeps it one cost effective because if they're not putting in 100% chrome pigment it's going to be cheaper um, and for two it makes it seem like there's more product in there right so I'm not sure 100% uh, what this is consisting of entirely I just know that it was not giving exactly the effect that I was going for but that's okay I chrome popped everything and here I am trying that water technique that I've seen going around the 3d water technique I've been wanting to try this forever there's actually um, an artist I follow on Instagram. She's amazing. She does great 3D work. Uh, her name is Syl, and I will leave her handle in the description. But she recently did this water technique with a koi fish nail that she made. And so I thought I would give it a try here. But you basically lay down a really thin layer of 3D gel, and then you take something rounded and circular to kind of put these dents in the water almost so that you're mimicking like ripples on a pool or the look of really calm waves really calm currents in the water in the surface of water so i start here with a silicone dabbing tool it's almost like a, a stamping tool and the effect was not quite drastic enough it was giving a really pretty uh smooth looking ripple effect but I wanted something with just a touch more definition. You can see here, I'm kind of struggling to get that definition to really hold in place and to be exactly as clear as I wanted it. So I did switch over to the handle of a brush at this point, just to get, again, a little bit more definition. And you can see that doing this just makes these really awesome shadows underneath that 3D gel. And it truly does look like rippled water. So I got that to where I wanted it. I smoothed out the edges just to clean up the profile of this nail a little bit with a silicone tool. 
it still came out pretty chunky don't get me wrong like this is going to create a nail that has quite a bit of product on it so expect it to be a little bit thick but i went ahead and cured it and just to define those ripples even more i added some of that white gel paint over just the raised portions of this nail and i really do like the look that this gives it's almost like sea foam on the surface of the ocean where you have all those teeny tiny little bubbles concentrating and it looks just like white caps on on the water so i did really like this the next step however i think i could have done without i take a little bit of that pearl chrome powder and i do rub it onto those raised sections as well thinking that that would also give some depth i'd seen some other people do that when they attempt this 3d look and i don't know if it is because of the chrome powder that i was using because it was a little bit powdery and it didn't give a um, really nice even sheen when rubbed in but i didn't love how this chrome powder looked i might try it again with a more finely milled chrome powder once i get some because this just I, I didn't love it i think it came out looking a little bit too like chalky versus shiny but that's okay these videos are all about experimenting for me so then I go in with a layer of top coat. This is my D-Gel signature top coat. I use it to cover my chrome pigments because I had already contaminated it a little bit with a gold chrome at one point. So now it's my dedicated chrome bottle. Just make sure that this layer is super thin so you're not losing too much definition on those ripples. And that's the look of the wave nail. I do like it overall. I think the effect showed through. And now I'm just adding that same chrome powder to a little bit of clear gel, just that D-gel clear gel. And I'm going to add some of that sparkle to the center of the butterfly and the center of the flower. I just wanted to add that shine in a little bit more in other parts of the design rather than just the bow. I'm always attempting to pull together a design by integrating parts from one nail into parts of other nails when it comes to colors, when it comes to shapes, when it comes to design elements. To get something looking cohesive, you want to try to match them in some way, in some concept. Now, I wanted to define some of the shapes here a little bit more, so I am taking that white gel polish and I am lining the edges of the bow. So here I go around the top edges, and I'm using this almost like a, a highlight just to kind of define some of those higher ridges in the 3D elements. I think this is just really nice for pulling the look together. That's the finished bow. Then to achieve the dewdrop look, you need some sort of nylon thread. I'm just using fishing line here six pound strong fishing line i wanted it thin enough that it would look very dainty and natural but not too thin to where it would break so i went with six pounds i think it works i think you could also do like a 20 pound if necessary but i like how six pound work and you're just going to evenly distribute that gel polish a clear gel polish i would recommend non wipe along the end of a piece of that fishing line and you kind of want to lay it on thick so that it starts pooling like it does here into these little dewdrop shapes. Before carrying this, you can move around the drops as you would like. You can combine some for a larger droplet. You can separate them for a smaller droplet. And then once you're happy with the overall shape of the beads, you're going to flash cure and then fully cure this product. This is why I recommend using a non-white because this is actually going to be the last step in this process. It's super easy once you know how to do it. It's very surprising. And here I'm just attaching the end to the center of the flower because I'm going to be doing the little like loop that's in the original inspo picture for this. So I am curing that in place and then I'm trying to decide here how exactly I want it to look. Once I've decided, I just trim off the excess, 
put some gel down where you want the other end affixed. And then I'm using tweezers here just to more easily manipulate that fishing wire. This can get a little bit tricky, so make sure you do have some sort of flash carrying lamp available because you're gonna have a hard time like sticking both hands into a nail lamp just to make sure that this gets affixed. If you don't have a flash carrying lamp, maybe a friend could help. Here I am just making more of that dewdrop strand, a longer one this time because I'm going to extend it from the center of the flower down towards the end of the nail. I really like this technique, it's fun, it's quite easy to do actually if you have the supplies, if you have the nylon string. It looks super complicated, probably, at least I thought so when I first saw it done. I actually first saw this from a jewelry maker that I follow. She has really pretty resin art, earrings, things like that. And she had done these gorgeous dangly dewdrop earrings that were strands of this along with strands of little, uh, I believe, clay flowers. And it was just the most precious thing. And I thought, you know what? I want to do that for a nail. And I am not alone in that thought because this is now becoming quite the popular technique. And I just, I love that so many other art forms are being used to create nail art. The amount that nail art has grown in complexity, it seems, since I was doing my own nails in, you know, middle school, just with one coat of regular polish, is crazy. You know, I, I remember some people getting really nice manicures, but never to the level that it seems a lot of nail artists, nail technicians are putting out today so it just it makes me really happy to see the style grow and to see more people getting involved with doing nails if there's the opposite of a gatekeeper um, i like to think that's what i am when it comes to sharing my passions it's part of the big reason i teach just because i love reading stories and i love even more sharing those stories and talking about them with people so for me the more people involved in the hobby the better i think it just helps everyone up their game when you've got so many awesome ideas coming out in a space so that's another reason i started this channel oh and if you haven't seen it yet i did start a discord it is free for everybody who follows me to join there was my cat making his regular appearance in my videos he gets curious sometimes he likes to sit on my lap while i work on nails but Yes, the Discord, it is up, it is public, so I will put an invite link in the description down below. Uh, please feel free to invite your friends who are interested in nail art. I just ask that you do follow the rules. The rules should be the first thing that you have to read when you join. I think there are already 20 some members on there, so thank you so much to all of you who have stopped by, said hi. Again, I love talking nails, and so I wanted to create a space where people could share product recommendations or inspiration for designs that they want to try, or even ask questions about designs that they are working on. I have already posted some sneak peeks of designs that are coming up in videos, and I'm also using it as a space to make announcements for things going on in the nail community. So like if there's a brand that's doing a contest or if they have big sales, um, yeah, I just, I want it to be a place where people can talk nails because that's a big reason I started this channel in the first place. So please feel free to join and please feel free to chat. Like, don't feel like you have to join the Discord and not say anything and that I'm the only one who's allowed to say anything. That's definitely not the case. Like, I want people to go there and I want people to talk and network and be able to collaborate. So, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that's my long spiel about Discord. Definitely check it out down below. Here, I'm just doing kind of the final touches on the nails. I'm top coating everything after adding some of the last little details on this set. I do like the zombie top coat for topping 3D elements because it is thicker. It just kind of helps encapsulate everything in and it makes those edges not quite as harsh where the 3D element sits on the nail. Although you do want to make sure you're doing a thin enough coat to where you're not losing definition on that 3D element. Here I'm top coating that pinky finger and I don't know if I like this either but I had decided I wanted to do like a ripple effect. My cat was still sitting on my lap at this point so if you're wondering what those little things are in frame, that's just his whiskers. 
But yeah, I, th I thought about doing the look of like these pearls that have been dropped into the surface of a pond or something like that, just to kind of go with another water themed nail. So I use that Jinbi crazy thick top coat and I start laying out the ripples themselves. I'm making these quite thick because my thought was if I put down the Jinbi top coat in the ripple shape and then I top that off with another layer of top coat, it would create like a really nice smooth finish. I think the problem with this thought process was that the Jinbi top coat was not the exact same formulation or even like a similar formulation as the Yogo top coat. So it didn't smooth it out quite as well as I had wanted, but I do think I could achieve the overall effect maybe with like the Jinbi crazy thick top coat and then using the Jinbi standard thickness top coat. So I have some more experimenting to do with this in the future, but overall, um, I'm okay with how it turned out and I like the concept. Oh, and this is the top coat I used. Okay, I used the Beatles top coat. And yeah, actually I think this one was almost too thin. It wasn't giving me the effect I wanted. And again, a different formulation than the Jin B top coat. So it just didn't meld together exactly as I had thought. So next time I will try it with the Jin B standard top coat. See if that gives me kind of the exact thing that I'm looking for. And here is the final look. I have the two variants of the set. This is the one with the butterfly as the middle finger. And here is the other variant with that smaller butterfly design for the middle finger. I don't know, you tell me what you think, which one is your favorite. As always, thank you so much everyone for being here, for checking out my videos. I really, really appreciate it. It's so exciting to see how this community has grown over the past half a year that I've really started to push out YouTube videos. My next work with me, I am planning on answering some questions about YouTube and just kind of what I've learned so far. So if you have any questions, please make sure to leave them in the comments down below. Check out my discount codes and my socials if you'd like to see other work from me. I do have an Etsy where I sell custom press-ons if that interests you as well. But yeah, I'm just really appreciative of all of you who watch and interact with the videos. I hope you enjoyed this one. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I will see you next time. Bye.